my name is Anderson Lay, I'm the artistic director for the Hawaii International Film Festival. Uh, this is the 39th edition, the 39th uh, Hawaii International Film Festival presented by Holly Kalani. Um, and thanks for coming to our virtual Taiwan talk and you know, kind of uh, the official kickoff of the uh, VR uh, portion of the festival. So for this talk, we're going to just talk to some of our uh, Taiwanese filmmaker guests who are in town for part of the Spotlight in Taiwan. Um, but before we do that, um, I'd like to invite um, one of our presenters here uh, from the Taiwan Academy of Los Angeles uh, office, uh, the director, Emmy Yang. Please come say a few words. Hi, welcome. Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the opening reception of the Spotlight on Taiwan. Um, I think uh, this year is uh, our F year with HIP. Um, so first of all, I would like to express my appreciation to Anderson Beck and his team. Uh, without their hard work, I think this Spotlight on Taiwan wouldn't be possible. Uh, first of all, I would like to have some introduction with uh, Taiwan Academy in Los Angeles. Um, Taiwan Academy in Los Angeles is an overseas office of the Ministry of Culture in Taiwan. Uh, our main mission is to present and to promote Taiwanese culture uh, through diverse activities such as exhibitions, performances, film screenings, etc. So uh, we work with him for eight years to present Taiwanese films. And just for audiences to understand more about Taiwan and its diverse culture. So this year is our F year, and we present two feature films. Uh, one is Heavy Craving, and the other one is Nina Wu. And besides two features, we have four uh, virtual reality works. I think you may uh, experience later on, and two shorts. So um, please come to uh, enjoy our films and have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. So yes, um, Taiwan Academy and the Ministry of Thank you. <laughs> and the Ministry of Culture of uh, Taiwan. Uh, have, we've been part of them for uh, eight years now, uh, and uh, this is a. Uh, and uh, historically, you know, we were a film festival, so the Spotlight in Taiwan has always been about feature films and short films, and we, you know, we. Uh, Actually, have two fantastic uh, feature films um, that are playing at the this weekend at the Regal Dole Canyon Theaters. Um, uh, Nina Wu by Mini Z and Heavy Critic by Pei Ju She, who is here in attendance. Give a round of applause for Pei Ju, the director of Heavy Craving. <laughs> and also for the first time, we're doing uh, a spotlight on uh, VR works from Taiwan. Um, and those films are and those works are Your Spiritual Temple Sucks, which is Produced by Estella Chen, who's here and from Taiwan as well. Let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Abandoned Temple, After Image for Tomorrow, and Bodyless uh, from Xin Qian Huang. And uh, he, um, he's supposed to be here, but he's actually his flight got rerouted to LAX. So uh, he's coming tomorrow. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we won't miss him here, but, you know, he will be here this weekend to present his film, body, uh, his VR work, Bodyless. Um, so, um, we're going to just have a short discussion about the, you know, the Taiwan uh, works here as part of the Taiwan Spotlight. Um, so, let's, I'd like to invite Peiju and uh, uh, Estella to come up. Come sit with me and we have a conversation. So, um, you know, before we go into the, you know, like uh, the films that we have here presented at the Spotlight Taiwan, can we just talk about your, your, your background in, in film or in entertainment? Um, Marcel, we, we actually known each other uh, for a few years ago. We worked on a separate project together. Um, and we, I know you as a, you know, more as a, kind of a live producer working in many projects. You worked on uh, the Ang Lee film, right? And then you worked on many, you know, commercials. Simon Lang, you name it, you know, so, uh, and then many works, so how did you, and it's just like, really in the last, like, two or three years, now you kind of, kind of, like, cornered the market when it comes to becoming a virtual reality producer. Uh, can you talk about how, how you got into VR? Uh, I think the 
PR is kind of a serendipitous um, encounter. Uh, 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 sorry. Yeah. So um, I didn't expect myself to be a virtual reality producer, but you know, when you are a producer in media and storytelling, you always you always want to find a way that you can connect to your audiences. And working as a line producer, um, I get to you know be really close to the creators and knowing like you know, uh, the practical part of how to make things happen. So uh, when I decided to become a producer, I, I decided not to limit myself. Like you know, uh, my company develops like feature films, uh, TV series, and then when we had that opportunity of saying like, okay, would you uh, explore virtual reality two years ago? Uh, we jump into it and see what it can bring to us, and that's kind of how it led us here. And you collaborated with the director John Chu, right? Um, and this is for um, your virtual temple sex so you traveled all over the world. Um, was that kind of your first big project that went outside of Taiwan to be a part of these various virtual reality showcases? Or Yeah, definitely. That's our very first one. Like with John, uh, we always wanted to create something together. We developed, we've been developing feature films together, but then at the same time, that virtual reality was, he was the one that introduced me to it. Like, I remember in 2016, he came to me and he's like, do you know anything about virtual reality and augmented reality? I'm like, I'm, what is that? What are you talking about? Can you talk, speak English to me? Like, you know, he's like, no, uh, and, and once I was introduced, I was fascinated by the idea and I was figuring out like whether we can uh, create narrative in, uh, in a series film or feature film that, that kind of talk about that how our future could be like when there is uh, this new media that's uh, affecting us. And instead of actually making that project, we jump into making real virtual reality uh, storytelling. I mean, do you see it as, um, I mean, what was the learning curve? Like, you're working in traditional film, now you're producing VR works. I mean, what are, what's the differences and challenges that you have to, maybe you have to re relearn things, or how to produce uh, I VR think, work? I think um, our uh, feature film uh, training background is always good, because, um, uh, we learn about that, that there's always going to be something new that we have to figure out. But then because virtual reality is a space that has a lot of uh, creatives from different fields as well. We, ha we, we, we have to learn how to communicate with people that knows very well technology, but not necessarily so much uh, in a cinematic storytelling. Yes, yeah. storytelling field. And how are you going to work with them? How do you speak the same language? And also, you need to include people from other fields like a theater background or other art space, uh, even music as well. How do you create immersive sound? That are all questions that uh, kind of uh, remind you that how you have to empty yourself. Even though you have experience in feature film background, you have to kind of just uh, create a space inside and say, okay, um, What's, what are we doing and what are we trying to experiment with uh, this work and who are the people that we want to bring in as artists to uh, collaborate together and uh, see what they can you know, bring out for, from each other. Um, I mean, PJ can uh, be in the active discussion here, but I mean, Taiwan, it's the, I mean, as far as I know, it's the only country I know in Asia that really is kind of focusing on Developing, you know, I guess XR or the you know the VR and AR, what have you, um, kind of works, right? And it's kind of you see the marrying of public and private um, organizations working together. Um, Paige, are, do you dabble at all in VR yet, or? Um, no, I haven't seen a lot of VR. I tried once, and then uh, I very looking forward to watch the, the film, your film, and. Uh, yeah, I think it's a very interesting experience as an audience to you know not because when you watch film, you you get all the information once on screen. But I got when last time when I watched a VR film, I got a little panic, not knowing like missing some details. I will be like moving around and not you know it, it's a little frustrating to not be able to see everything. But I, I think it's a part of the experience and uh, yeah. I mean, philosophically, you as a director, do you find VR, because you know, when you're a director, you 
you are, you know, you're the auteur, this is your story, you chose this angle, you chose this pathway, you chose, you know, these, this dialogue, but with VR, it's, you know, it's the user who, I guess, chooses in the limited capacity. Do you find any, you know, philosophical, like, um, you know, like, good, good or bad when it comes to VR? Well, I think it's, it's kind of like creating a whole environment more for the viewer to, experience and I think it's a good and very challenging thing that I myself don't know if I can do but uh, I think it's a very cool thing that I want to do right now. I mean I see like you know aside from you know standalone works that you've worked on um, you know there's more and more I guess like you know what you call uh, traditional filmmakers like uh, BDZ perfect example director of Nina Wu which is part of the Small Land Taiwan he did a VR piece for for Nina Wu, you know, so, um, and, you know, I don't think he knows anything about VR per se, but I think it's just like, it just seems like there are, uh, or even like, I see other like horror films, for example, like, uh, we'll see what, the Tagalog yeah. series. I think there were like, there were like actual VR components that was part of the, I guess the, um, the, uh, the, you know, the marketing of the film or something like that, right, so. I think it comes to the key of world, story world building. Like, so um, we, we've been in a phase where we do feature films, we're very much focused in the narrative. What's the arc of the character? Like, you know, uh, you're going on a journey with the character. But it's a little bit different when you are uh, creating, um, I guess, virtual reality or um, like, you know, nowadays there's the you know, Marvels and all this uh, TV series. Yeah. It's about, it's about um, what's the world that you're trying to create uh, for your audience. And, and first you have that world and then you start um, uh, getting into that. And I think that a lot of those work are uh, trying to capture that um, essence. For example, uh, you know, actually Midi, obviously he's focused right now in speech of film, but I had a conversation with him because he studied, uh, I think, multimedia. So like, right. so he was actually curious about that uh, extension of where his story goes from that uh, alternative transmedia uh, version of it. But then at the same time that he still, um, you know, there is a core of that story world he's creating that he wants his audience to be more involved to instead of being passively just receiving that information that he's trying to, uh, you know, uh, tell them what he's telling them. And definitely when, you know, creators like, um, you know, saying, you know, being in feature film, there is a, a very, um, there's sort of control in feature films, definitely. When yeah. you have storyboards, when you have the language that's all developed, you get to know exactly how to make people feel. But uh, when you are in uh, a space of virtual reality, for example, um, you, don't, you, 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 you are trying to figure out how to make them feel a certain way. But the, the only way to start with is to say, okay, what's the space I'm creating for them? Because this is not so much only narrative, but also uh, there, when there's the word reality, then you have to be able to think about um, what's the, the, the alternative version of the reality that this audience will be remembering, because mm -hmm. there's that me memory uh, aspect of it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're going to size a little bit from VR, because we're serving two masters. We're talking about VR, and we're talking about yeah. traditional films as well. So, um, so with the two films that we chose, um, I think uh, we're just serendipitous that they both were about, um, you know, uh, strong female characters, right? And Nina Wu, which is playing uh, this weekend, uh, is from, from Director Midi Z and had world premiere of the Cannes Film Festival. And just a quick backstory on, on Nina Wu is actually the, his kind of like go-to go actress, um, Kexi Wu, um, was inspired by the, you know, the scandal, the Harvey Weinstein scandal. Uh, and so she just, and you know, the Me Too movement. So she, never wrote a script before, she just was compelled to write a script about her personal experiences working in the, the film industry. So she presented it to, to her director, Midi Z, and he was like surprised, like, okay, sure you want to make this film? So they did, and uh, it's a, you know, really kind of like a, almost like a uh, magical realist kind of take on her, I mean, basically based on her career. So it's, uh, and she stars in it, and uh, it's a really compelling film, and I highly recommend you to, to catch it here at the But also, with um, Keiju's film, 
heavy craving. You know, it's a more, I guess, lighthearted, but at the same time, very still very deep exploration on, uh, on maybe basically a woman who is a heavy set. She's overweight, and she, you know, she's, you know, she's a, I believe she's a cook for a school, right? And, you know, she's beloved, but you know, they, you know, the kids call her names and what have you. And it's just her trying to figure out her her life, and you know, and just getting advice from parents or friends and what to do. And she's just trying to decide to how to navigate her life. So, Paige, this is your, I believe, your first film, right? So, can you talk about kind of the idea behind a heavy craving? Uh, it, heavy craving is kind of inspired by my personal experience. Uh, I was an overweight teenager, like just a little chubby, like not not super heavy set. But uh, my family would call me names as well in a very loving way. They see it as a gesture of you know just lovingly teasing you, mm. just expressing their care and stuff. It's a very common thing in Asia culture, I yeah. think. Yeah. So so they just call me chubby, and that makes me feel very insecure about my body from that time to to this day i'm still very aware and conscious about my body changes like everything so uh, yeah and then i find it's just very interesting that in taiwan we are very used to uh greeting people by commenting on their appearance like that's the first thing or the second thing we say when we meet someone uh, being a friend or a new friend, or yeah. So I, just, I feel like we should talk about that a little bit. And uh, I don't think people are aware that how much uh, harm they might be making by, by doing this, like commenting on people's body appearance, because everyone's doing that, so we're kind of used to it. And uh, for people who are receiving those uh, judgments, they don't feel like they have the right to say anything because the society makes them think it's their fault to be not looking perfect, like not looking like what we've seen on screen on media. So I want to make this film talking about this issue. And also I kind of want to show more different kind of bodies on screen, like in real life. This is how it is in real life, but we don't see that enough on, on screen and on uh, media or how did you find your main actress? Um, I I saw her in a short film, and uh, in I was I was already writing the script while uh, well, when I'm searching for actress, and I always knew that I wanted to work with a new uh, new actress because I kind of want us want audience to see the character with fresh eyes and. Because sometimes uh, plus size actors or actresses are often asked to play clumsy oh, or funny. Yeah, yes, yeah. 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 Sidekick characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't want people to come into this film with this stereotypical assumptions while doing this character. So I kind of want to work with a new, new face. Mm -hmm. And also because as a, a new director, I feel like I, I need someone to have the patience with me as well to mm. develop the character together. So uh, I find Jia Ying who, who's great and uh, we talk about this script for more than a year before we really go into the production and uh, the script kind of develop with her and the character become more and more like her, like some characteristic that I find very uh, interesting in her, I bring it to the character. Mm -hmm. And um, because you know, the film has uh, traveled around the festival circuit. I think you were just in LA, right? Or the, I think you had a screening at UCLA, um, and also uh, was at the Taipei International Taipei Film Festival earlier this past summer and won the audience award, right? Uh, yes, uh, you won the audience award at the uh, new talent competition. Okay, new and they also won the new talent award at Taipei Film. Okay, great. For the for the actress. Yes. Okay, congratulations. So has it been released yet commercially uh, in Taiwan? It's gonna be released next week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> On Friday, I'm very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so thank you. For, I mean, I know you're only here for two, two, three days, right? And also, what's happening right now in Taiwan is the Golden Horse yes. Film Festival, and that's like the biggest film festival, and also awards 
um, you know, kind of like the you know Chinese language Oscars. You know, there's interesting stuff happening this year. But uh, <laughs> you know, but um, you know, um, you know, I think, and you know, thank you for coming for just a short, brief time here in the islands to to you know uh, promote yeah. the film. And thank I know you. Absolutely. But um, tell me about I. It's kind of segue to like bring Sally in. Um, you know, just like tell me about you know, this Me Too movement and what happened. So. Uh, what, you know, some of the challenges, do you see more and more um, women uh, directors or writers working behind the camera? Can you, I mean, you as yourself, as a woman <laughs> director as well, but do you see more of your colleagues be at, um, uh, uh, working in the industry as well? Yeah, I don't think that more and more, or, yeah, I think there's always been a lot of female or, filmmakers. Or let me, let me rephrase it, like, because you talk about your film, uh, it's essentially, you know, um, you know, kind of like I would say maybe a coming of age story or someone who's trying to better her, better their life, but you're coming in from a different point of view. You're doing it like you're not like you, know, you said, you know, like these heavy characters are more kind of more comic relief. Or when I see, you know, a lot of uh, films, coming of age films, or ch uh, main characters are challenged. They're usually, you know, uh, very handsome, very beautiful, uh, you know, Taiwanese idols or something. <laughs> You know, so um, can you, yeah, so like, do you think the, what I'm trying to say is that do you think the, the type of stories are being more authentic? Is that resonating with local audiences or do you think it's still a challenge to make commercial movies for the local audience? Mm. Okay. Yeah, I think audience in Taiwan can kind of are very open-minded to every uh, different kind of subjects. With, Thing, like uh, independent films in Taiwan that hit the market and have great success. So I think audience are up to anything as well as I feel like connected to the story mm -hmm. and uh, either commercial, uh, a more commercial film or, or film like mine. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I do feel a little surprised like uh, in a good way that um, I don't kind of con uh, connect to people more than I think. I feel like a lot uh, this topic relate to uh, local audience more than I imagine. Like everyone really do have this kind of you know issues or insecurity like like mine. So really, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, can you talk about Salad about the. Um your spiritual temple sucks, and actually, just I'm still a newbie when it comes to VR. But I've seen, I mean, I experienced some of the, the stuff that's coming out of Taiwan. And uh, you talk about, I mean, what's great about Taiwan in general is like the localization of it. It's sort of very uniquely Taiwanese. And can you talk about because like because um, your film, your work also deals with kind of like spiritualism, you know, like or like kind of Taiwanese folklore. Can you talk about that? I see that a lot in a lot of these VR works. Yeah, I think it's just um, the general Taiwanese. They, you know, we are, we have the culture of uh, you know the really, the Taoist religion Taoist, yeah, yeah, yeah. that you have multi gods and you worship what like, you know, great people or you worship anything basically. Right. And, and I think that is something that uh, even though it doesn't matter whether you are a believer or not, it's just part of your identity. And that's part of what you search for when you are talking about when we, we, when we get into virtual reality. That's what connects us the most with virtual reality. The reason that we did the spiritual temple sucks uh, the way it is is because we realize there is something in our culture that very much is similar to the ritual of virtual reality, putting something on and getting into a space that's supposedly to be your uh, your spiritual world and you're supposed to make it better. And that's something that um, even though it's very Taiwanese, but at the same time is also very global because I think that's something everybody has that imagination of. Like you could be from being here in Hawaii, you want, you probably also imagine being like, you know, trying to make your life better in some other sense. And I think that's just um, the, the human issue. And um, the, the thing that, um, the work that we try to do is not necessarily so much uh, only focus in Taiwan, but very much to talk about um, being an Asian and how our identity connects to the rest of the world. So I think that's more important than just uh, saying this is 
what Taiwan is. But you know, to give us give people the connection of what Taiwan can be uh, very similar to their own culture. So do you feel that that's kind of your your mandate and your your work to make it put a stamp on what is Taiwanese? Or just looking at just it's just naturally come like from those from that when it comes to just exploring universal stories. I mean, can you talk about some of the future other future projects you're working on? And they're primarily all going to be based in Taiwan, right? I mean, or maybe yeah. co-productions as well. Yeah, so um, the second VR work that we did is called Mechanical Souls. But we actually have French director and uh, a British uh, Korean writer yeah. on board. But then it's talking about a near future Asian wedding and how does that look like? And we were not, when we were developing it, we were not so much saying like, oh, this has to look like a Taiwanese wedding. But we pick up from the Taiwanese wedding, what is the, the drama in Taiwanese wedding, the things that were happened, and also the way that how people behave. And we try to integrate it and say, how would that look like in the near future Asian wedding, and, and kind of satirize it. And even the, the, new, the, the latest project that we're working on right now is uh, it's called Great Hoax. It's called, uh, in the first episode, is the moon landing. So we all have, yeah, we all have that famous, like that conspiracy theory of like, faking the moon landing. Yeah, faking the moon landing. And uh, so uh, from being in Taiwan all the way, uh, you know, in Far East and a small island that a lot of people are confused of, um, in Great Hopes, what we try to do is that we are going to satirize that fact and saying like, you know, we want to make our own version of fake moon landing so we can show our own identity right. to uh, the international public. So uh, as an audience, show how 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 great you do the fake land fake moon landing. It's like show the power of the ingenuity of Taiwan. Exactly. Yeah. So you can be great, as great, and and let's make Taiwan rich again. All right. and, like that also reflects very much a global attitude in political situation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it's going to be a a, a series, uh, a trilogy. Uh, the second episode is going to be working with Argentinians because okay. our, our co-production company in Argentina also found that connected okay. to their own culture. So oh, we're yeah, going to yeah. make fun to that uh, political sentiment of it. Yeah. Cool. I know, I know we try to get mechanical souls, but it's, it's very ambitious. Yeah. So maybe next year we'll bring it it's, here. It's yes. Very, yeah. Very exciting. Yeah. Um, all right, I think we're going to end this chat, but Pedro, can you talk about maybe what you're working on next? I know your, your film is releasing next week, but are you still already working on your next project? Uh, yeah, I'm mostly working on this releasing right now, but I'm kind of want to try, um, I don't know, something set in one location. Okay. And, uh, with, uh, maybe you can do a, a VR project in one location. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it's still in the very early early stages. Okay. Well, um, yeah, please. Uh, this is our executive director, Becky. Okay. Hi, guys. Sorry, I wasn't planning on saying anything tonight. Um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, there is one person I really want to acknowledge. Um, two years ago, I was walking around the office at HIF, telling everyone, "Hey, guys, I want to do a I want to do a VR program." And everyone's like. Okay, cool, whatever. And I was like, no, guys, I want to do a VR program. Everyone was like, yeah, all right, go away. And uh, they were like, we have 10,000 things to do, leave us alone. And Duncan, who was an intern at HIF, like, took it over. And we had this amazing VR program last year, and it was tiny, and it was so successful for what it was. And so this year, I was finally able to raise a little bit of money, and I convinced him to come back from Australia leave his PhD program for a few months, come back to HIF, at which point I'm like, okay, so it has to be amazing, it has to be in two places, it has to complement all of our amazing programs at HIF already, it has to involve the local community, oh, and we have to spotlight women, people of color, indigenous, and it has to be the most innovative, creative projects, we have to have panels, we have to have a, a five-course meal that includes VR, and he's like, Okay, and he did all of it, um, and it's an incredible program. Oh, and then I'm like, it has to be free to the public, too. Um, so I'm a crazy person to work with, but it's an amazing VR program. There, we have these beautiful programs that Duncan put together, again, me being like, oh, we have to have a printed program, um, 
and he found sponsors, and he did so much work finding the most incredible projects that do really complement other programs at HIF, including the Taiwan Spotlight, um, our Bill Check Spotlight on New American Filmmakers, our Pacific Spotlight, and our focus on um, I decided to just... Environmental issues. Um, <laughs> animation, too. And animation. He found like the coolest company out of LA that's doing VR. Convinced them to let us show a bunch of their stuff. So, um, just really quickly, please, a big thanks to Duncan. Okay. Um, hello. Well, aloha and good day. Um, uh, I flew over here from Australia and my arms are very tired. Um, thank you for laughing. Um, I, I suppose I'd just like to thank um, Becky for taking the risk on this. Um, VR is risky. It's difficult. There are people who don't understand it. Um, there are people who will really struggle with it. Um, and it means so much to me, as I'm sure it means to all of our producers and everyone at the HIF team, that you would be here, that you would invest in it. Um, Given this occasion, I actually really would like to highlight what an extraordinary uh, privilege it is to be able to collaborate with Taiwan in the space of VR. Um, I could program an entire VR program exclusively from Taiwan, and there were so many projects which we couldn't include. Um, it's such an exciting opportunity to partner with a country investing so much in technology, in culture, in the intersections of technology and culture. Um, it's my laptop, so I um, <laughs> hope you enjoy that. Uh, as you can tell, I'm very tech savvy in that space. Um, and uh, it, it really does mean a great deal to be able to present this section. Um, thank you very much. I'm going to go to my laptop. <laughs> Actually, um, before we, we resume, Doug, can you just give us a lay of the land this weekend? Um, where, One moment. Okay. We're gonna, <laughs> So the, from my understanding, the Taiwan Taiwanese VR pro, um, pro works will be here at the Sandbox, right? And um, get off the mic. Um, okay. So uh, an outline of how uh, the HIF VR weekend is going to be working. So uh, in the Sandbox space, again, we, it's such a privilege to be in this creative, extraordinary space. Uh, this will be hosting our Spotlights on Taiwan and Indigenous Perspectives program. I promise the headsets will be working by tomorrow. Um, as well as our talks and Hawaii XR Showcase on Monday. Uh, you can also go down to SALT, also in Kaka'ako, just about three blocks up that way, where we have our 360 video programs, uh, including our animated VR shorts and our environmental VR shorts. Two sites, all of them are free, um, but you can book your place online to guarantee your spot on the day. Um, do take a look through the rest of our program, as well as the rest of the HIF program. It's an extraordinary program this year. We're really excited about it and we hope you enjoy and explore with us. Thank you. We have the, your turn. Hello. Uh, spiritual temple sex. Oh, yeah. yes. So, <laughs> apologies. So we have both your spiritual temple sucks here, which will be available from tomorrow, as well as bodyless from Dr. Sien Tian Huang. Um, he's not here at the moment, but he will be here at some point. I really do want to recommend those projects in particular. Uh, your spiritual temple sucks is utterly hilarious. Um, and the way in which it uses VR and 360 storytelling for the purposes of humour is breathtakingly innovative. And then Bodyless is extraordinarily experimental, but utterly, utterly wonderful. So I hope you enjoy all of them, as well as the variety of other experiences that we have on offer. Um, but not tonight. Um, so I look forward to seeing you over the rest of the weekend. Anything else? No. Uh, there we go. So, again, just let's give another round of applause for our special guest, Pidu Jay and uh, Stella Chen, over in Taiwan. And I also want to thank you, Taiwan Academy, Los Angeles, for supporting this program for many years. And uh, we hope to expand the VR uh, program for years to come because, like Duncan said, we find that you know, uh, Taiwan is the only country that we know that really focuses on really kind of prepping up this new, new space. So it's very exciting to see. Uh, and uh, as we continue our journey with VR, we we'll definitely continue our journey with Taiwan as well. So thank you very much, and then enjoy the. Rest.